Ramble. This episode of The Tripod is brought to you by DoorDash. Use code TRIPOD for 25% off your order of $15 or more. Also, thanks to DoorDash and Chime for sponsoring today's episode. What is fun (laughs) about the history of matzah, welcome to The Tripod, is that matzah is basically the original without a recipe. It's true. And my, (laughs) I, you know, they were trying to make bread. They didn't know how to do it. They fucked up mightily. And I would say I that I don't think I, it was I, they didn't know how to do it. They knew they didn't have the ingredients for no, it. No, 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 no. Rugrats <laughs> Passover taught me that he just forgot. Oh. And then he goes, I accident. Oh, looks, I just didn't invented they, matzo. Is it in huh. the in the in the original story they baked it on their backs in the sun? Keith is such a better Jew than me, isn't it? <laughs> they infuriating? baked it on their backs. I believe that was the the mythos of it. Now I'm sure they they baked it probably on a pan in the sun or some, or a stone in the sun. I'm not sure. But it is very easy to like make. Like a stone. <laughs> in the sun. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're talking about Passover this week. No, yeah, we're not. But no. we're starting about Passover because... Uh, he throws Passover every year. Uh-huh. Yeah. He knows how to cook Passover foods. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He is a better Jew than me, and it's kind of dope. That's really nice. I'm going to make mashed potatoes this year. <laughs> <laughs> for Passover? Uh-huh. That's you know cool. why? Why? Mashed potatoes are delicious. Here's a question for you, Keith. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do potatoes, when they go green, can you not eat them? You're not supposed <laughs> You're not to. not supposed to. But I know, it, but... I think it, there's certainly... <laughs> If it's a teeny bit green, you're probably going to be fine. If they're fully green, you absolutely should not. You What's going to happen ever to cut me? the spud away? Yeah, I going. know you're not supposed to do that either. It's really? Poison. It's poison. <laughs> Is it, it poison? It, it's just going to give you diarrhea. I mean, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's. I'm going to have that from the milk and butter and the potatoes anyway. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, unfortunately, you know, we're having fun, obviously, but we do need to talk about something really deeply serious. What do we need to talk about? Well, Keith, um, we don't. Talk about Bruno on this. We don't talk about Bruno, but people responded to the most recent episode. They were livid. I don't know if if you didn't listen, but people. I mean, I listened, but I didn't like. (laughs) I normally there's not a soundtrack of the listeners of the podcast for me to listen to. That'd be cool, though. Yeah, a podcast you guys make where all of you are listening and just sort of talk, and there's sort of a Mm. crowd murmur the whole time, just scoffing. Yeah, Yeah. occasional laughter. I received dozen of feedback wow. from dozen. people just heartbroken about our words about Indianapolis. Mm. Heartbroken, shattered, broken even. Were there any in that mix that were like, yes, you were right, but... Almost all of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I I'm, am upset. <laughs> I'm guessing they took the time to respond because they got nothing better to do in Indianapolis. <laughs> hey, oh! Where's it? But don't... Hey, get, get me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a soundboard. You want a soundbite? I yeah. couldn't hear. Were you? I think you were just lowering your. I was just lowering your mic. Oh, I thought you were going to give us a. Oh no, that'd be cool. Hang on. No, that's not. Oh, I knew it was going to be this sad trombone. Yeah, hang on. Hey, hey you go. it's so loud too. It's very loud. Well, <laughs> Keith, I uh, assembled some uh, some emails from people from Indianapolis who wanted, to, and I just wanted. I feel like it's important to address controversy. We got to address the backlash. Yeah, let's do it from the Indianapolis thing. So I am curious, Keith. Did anyone come to your show with with and prove they came from Indianapolis? I had a group of four people who <laughs> carpooled together to my show, yeah. and they even brought a newspaper from oh. Indianapolis with that day's date. That's yeah, awesome. they did it. They got t- free tickets to the show. I gave them some free stickers as awesome. well after when they came and said, hey, and it was a tremendous show. It was so fun. It was at Lincoln Hall in Chicago, which nice. is great because normally we do comedy clubs, but this time it was actually a concert venue, which means the sound is good. The lights are dope. It's mm. a concert, which is always super fun. And uh, the, the funny thing, and I, I won't go into this too much because I know we want to apologize to Indianapolis <laughs> perhaps, um, but I did a show and there were some people in the top balcony and Huey went up there and uh, things got mm. silly eating chili in a gay bar because he always goes all over the audience. And he was like, after the show, he's like, there, well, there were like seven guys there and I don't know, they just seemed out of place. That's not our typical audience. I don't know who they were. <laughs> and we would later find out that it was... Icelandic superstar Dothi Freyr, who what? is a cool synth artist who competed for Iceland in Eurovision, got fourth out of all of Eurovision, which is like a huge deal. Uh, <clears throat> and then he was on tour and he was doing a show at Lincoln Hall a few days after. Uh, we DM'd and he said, love the show. And I saw that he actually had sent me a DM in 2018 Whoa. saying that his wife said we were similar and we are somewhat similar. And then 
as luck would have it, he was playing a show in West Hollywood this past week. So I went to his show. Whoa. So within a week, he saw my show in Chicago and I was able to see his show in Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, and his show was way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> his show was out of control. Amazing. It was just him and uh, this this other girl and they it's a synthesizer band yeah. right so you know i love it and he was rocking the synths he was rocking the modular <laughs> synths the analog synths the digital synths it was fucking incredible <laughs> he was singing it was so cool it was great i recommend you look up dothy frayer and you would actually spell it d-a-d-i because that's actually an icelandic letter that we don't have hmm. um but i think his instagram is dotty makes music but he's cool he's super cool Whoa. That does sound cool, but enough of your victory Enough. Lap. It's time to pay the piper. Keith, you yeah. said some incendiary things, and you alone said those nasty things. That's right. That's true. It's just me. That's Keith. You said you shared a document. Is I, that, is yeah, time? I shared a Google Doc. Oh, I'm invited to edit it. Okay, I can change, <laughs> how, this, I can change how this comes across entirely. Okay. Hello, Try Guys. I listen to every episode of the tripod on my commute to work, and now I'd like to express my disappointment in the commentary that was made toward my home city in the recent episode of the tripod. Dun, dun. I've watched Try Guys content since high school. This is meant to make you feel old. No retribution for your comments, the by the way. What the fuck was that skip, Miles? And to be very <laughs> honest, Keith, you have always been my favorite. Therefore, okay. your steadfast commentary has made me most disappointed. I do not live with my parents. In fact, my parents moved away from Indy. And my husband and I chose to stay in Indiana, even with some of the most mobile occupations people can have. Let me share with you some of the small but important highlights and fun facets of Indianapolis. We have a cat cafe. A cat cafe. We have the best weekend in gaming, Gen weekend Con. In gaming. And we do have some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just like other cities like Chicago, we have a, a fine zoo, a great state museum, and plenty of venues for performing arts and visiting artists. That's damn right. And it has been said before that Indiana is a great place to live, but not to visit. Partially, I agree. <laughs> I enjoy living in Indiana. I agree I like to travel. Got some points. There are some awesome things to do in other cities. Nonetheless, the extensive slander from the Try Guys was uncalled for, and I pose this question to you. I pose. Have this you ever considered, question. Keith, maybe it was not Indianapolis. Maybe it was you. <gasps> you, you, you. Best wishes, you, Megan. You, you. P.S. I sincerely love the podcast. If I still go for the miles, is the best part. I will now go watch a movie that's very evening. Thank you, Miles, for the advice. Take all my commentary with love. I thought it might be funny. <laughs> I love all your content. Sending love from Indy. Mm -hmm. I will say I, I was thinking about Indianapolis, obviously. <laughs> And there is a really good big Jewish deli. Mm, that really, I used to stop through, and that be hente. That's cool. And uh, it was really good, and it was like I don't. I remember I used to drive through Indianapolis, and it became the one thing we would actually stop and go to in Indianapolis because yeah. it was like a, I don't remember what it was called, but it was good. So that's your official apology: is that good Jews? Yeah, they've yeah they got some there. good Jews down there. <laughs> 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 I mean, I had some. I had a good sandwich. Yeah. Um, I do like cats. I love a good cat cafe. So. I've never been to a cat cafe. Oh, it feels oh, bro, so bro. I feel like I'd be sneezing up a storm. You got to get down to Indianapolis. Take Claritin. Do. Take Claritin. Oh yeah. You That's take some drugs. Guy. Yeah. Over the counter. Pet the kitties. That's cool. Then you Fill leave. some coffee on a cat. They I know. What are the cats freak they're gonna out? They're going to try to make you adopt a cat. That's oh, the that's... secret agenda of cat cafes. Yeah. It's oh, an adoption center. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was just sort of like come and fucking have a sandwich. No. But aren't the cats going to be like, give me some. All right. First yeah. of all, you shouldn't be in a cat cafe. First of all, <laughs> I don't think it's, just, it's not What even, kind of podcast is this? Typically, it's just coffee. There's not a lot of food because I think they don't want people to give sandwiches to the cats. Not only yeah. that, <laughs> typically they don't actually have a cafe within right. the cat cafe because it's a health code violation. Oh, really? So, yeah. Two different rooms. Well, so they take your coffee coffee or order and then they go get it <laughs> yeah from oh, somewhere right. else and they then they bring it, it yeah. over yeah. yeah wow weird i went to a cat cafe in santa barbara and it was so cute yeah it was so cute that's awesome it was cute i pet it i all. hate this voice i pet it all it was the kitty so it was so cute i pet it all the kitty oh i don't they like jumped it jumped in my lap <laughs> not this, petting is, them. this is a private voice between you and becky yeah, yeah like between felt, me and it, my cat it felt <laughs> it felt sexy cats. didn't it yeah it did. oh you will kitty get over here <laughs> yeah it feels yeah, like, really i like that you guys think that's a sexy voice there's so <laughs> many more the um, thing i've ever seen um yeah. Okay, this is a list of good things that they say that is good. Okay. 
They got Long's Bakery. Bring cash and get the blueberry cake donut. Life changing. Hear that, Ned? Bring cash. Bring cash. The cash Indianapolis outside, Children's Museum, not just for children. <laughs> it's it's for losers in Indiana too. Oh, <laughs> that's not what it says. That's not what it says. Oh, I apologize. Keith, I, I take it back. Keith, I take it back. Immediately. On, we've taken enough controversy <laughs> from the city of Indianapolis. We gotta reach out to the mayor. And oh, see. there is a vintage arcade called Tappers. That sounds cool. What that's if cool. we try to get the mayor on the podcast? I like that. <laughs> That'd be dope. to defend Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, to be like Keith said some shit, and now he the mayor. He Let's look to... up. Who I the bet mayor you we could get an honorary key to the city. That, somehow, you think I can? You think just because you're internet famous, you can get an honorary key to the city, that's and you think, think you deserve that? That's right? how I think it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I heard that Joe. Tappers is a uh, retro arcade, uh, not by choice, but just because they didn't update <laughs> it since 1974. It's retro now. <laughs> Joe Hogset. Joe Hogsett, shout out. That's a good name. Yeah, that's a really poor good. name if I ever heard one. And uh -huh. he is the mayor. Uh, he used to be the secretary of state of Indiana. Shut the fuck up. Hogsett. He, yeah. <laughs> mayor Hogsett. Chairman of the Indiana Democratic Party. The Hogsett had trouble in elementary school with that name. Or yeah. he oh, did well. Yeah. Or he did. Or they were like, <laughs> yo, hog. He'd be like, yo, yo, I hear you're set like a hog, big boy. It's, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pete, I think we need to issue another apology. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> to Joe Hogsett. What? Joe Go Hogsett. apologize to Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe. I apologize unless you are set like a hog, in which case, nice. He's definitely set like a hog. We don't know. Um, <laughs> he looks, like, he looks a like a normal guy. <laughs> looks like a guy. Yeah, so he looks like he's old. Hey, -ish. Oh, he probably is. He looks 60s. good. He looks talking good. about he's old. You better hope he's pray you look that good. Hair. You better I like hope he looks, you look that good. Yeah, dude, I would love good. to look that good whenever I'm as old as he is. Oh, he's <laughs> 65. Damn, he looks good. He looks what pretty did, good, you actually. You should go golfing with Mayor Hogsett. Oh, my gosh. Golfing <laughs> with mayors with Keith. <laughs> <laughs> golfing with mayors with, with Keith. Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm not good at golf. <laughs> very bad at golf. Pretty funny. The only time I played golf is the four versus one golf video you, where I yeah. threw <laughs> my club on the first hole about probably further than I ever hit the ball. And you're <laughs> blackout drunk in this. I oh, like. yeah. Serious. <laughs> I'm mostly talking about their dick size while we hit the hit the ball around. That's a good world tour, actually. Yeah. If you guys were the mayor of a city, what was one thing you'd be like? That's what I'd do. I mean, first day. First day in office, you're the mayor of like a small town, like, I don't know, a couple thousand people. Oh, I throw myself a party. You <laughs> I give myself a, a local holiday. Yeah, a local holiday is Keith good. Day. Yeah. Keith Day. I'm not actually sure what powers a mayor has. <laughs> well, right. That's kind of the thing. That kind of like it's more like for the, you know, for the face of it. They They're, must have holiday making power. I feel like they just like do the how fast the crosswalks go. Get the mayor be like, oh, hey, we're not. All, all things are canceled today because of x thing that happened in the world you know mm. like when there's a tragedy typically they can be like okay hey everything can be closed today schools can close oh really i assume that probably who, who does that maybe the governor no for the state or can it be on the city level they're busy arguing like what if there was like a prominent city mm. celebrity yeah and they died suddenly and tragically and Ooh, it was like yeah. they were the heartbeat of the city would you think that the mayor could be like hey everybody like, Go for home instance, and be with your loved ones. in Indianapolis, when Keith dies, they're going to throw a big old celebration. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> not right. 100%. They're going to yeah, fucking course. party. Ding dong, the Keith is dead. Which your Keith? How much burger Keith? So the mayor directs the administrative structure, appointing and removing of department heads. While the council has no, has legislative power, the mayor has veto power. So the mayor can just, like, assign people to do stuff. And emergency power. Mayor of L.A. is... Garcetti. Is yeah. it still Garcetti? Is, is it? He talks to me when I'm at the airport. I went outside his house. You hear his voice saying, I'm Eric Garcetti. Yeah. This is the Los Angeles airport. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the airport. <laughs> Have a good time in our Have city. It. Spend your money and leave. <laughs> Isn't it annoying when you go to the store, you get back and you realize you forgot that one thing you meant to grab like a like a toothbrush with an action hero character for your four-year-old <laughs> happens to me well doordash connects you with the restaurants you love right now and right to your door and you can get grocery essentials you need with doordash too get drinks snacks and other household items delivered in under an hour 
Ordering's easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with contactless delivery drop-off setting. For a limited time, you guys can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code TRIPOD. That's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TRIPOD. Don't forget that's code TRIPOD for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change terms apply. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save. Pay bills generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Ah, see what I did there? Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at chime.com slash tryguys. That's chime.com slash tryguys. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. You guys want to hear about a real uh, boner move I pulled? Uh oh. I yes. wasn't sure if I was going to share this with the world. Hell but yeah. then I Please. realized this is. A good embarrassing moment is always worth yeah. a podcast. So I, uh, I went to my brother in law to be's bachelor party so, oh, this yeah. past weekend with a bunch of rowdy boys. Uh, went down to this small town in Mexico that my family likes to go to, and we we know the way. Mm. So it was like nice chill weekend. You hear Mexico weekend, and you're like, oh shit, those boys are going to nightclubs and shit. Yeah. Nah, we didn't do that. We just hung out on the beach, got a got a boat, went into the water. It was nice. Chill weekend uh, in Tijuana. You chill think? weekend in Tijuana. <laughs> no, it was uh, down in Puerto Vallarta. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so. I go to this place a lot. It's yeah. a very routine flight, super easy. You don't even go to the international terminal. Three hour flight, nothing. Mm-hmm. And well, I've you done, don't have to go through the international. Terminal? No, it just goes out of like the normal. It's like a domestic flight. It, it, I mean, it isn't, but yeah, it's out of a domestic terminal. How do they check your passport? They just do it. They do the it date? there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Fuck LAX. Yeah, man. Oh, LAX. All right. Wow, yeah. So you you go out of like your normal Delta wow, or United crazy. or whatever. Yeah. Cool. So. I've done this a million times. I make my checklist. I make sure I have everything. I get down to the airport and I'm like, this is basically just like going to freaking Vegas or San Diego for the weekend. Yeah. So relaxed Uh that I got to the airport, went to check in, realized I did not bring my passport. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, boy. And so I was like, oh, fuck, if I go. Go and you're a real get to the airport with only as much time as you need. Kind <laughs> yeah, of. yeah, right. yeah. There's well, no this time. time I was a little early, mm-hmm. but I was like, oh my god, if I go home and back, I'm you won't make it. I'm no. fucked. I won't. I won't be able to do that. So I'm like, okay, what do I? So I, I start and I'm just like, okay, I can't. I can't go. I'm looking at other flights. Then right. I go, wait a second. What if the passport could come to me? Ooh. Hell yes. Hell yes. Okay. I love this. I, right. This is a great idea. And so I go, okay. Jack, what are you doing right now? Do you want to end today Using early? Company resources. Dun, 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 this is pretty good. Dun, 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 this is dun, dun, good. It's dun, dun, Friday. Uh, who knows? Thursday. No, it was it was no, it was earlier in the week. It was yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, you're Tuesday. Right. So I I I go, Jack, whatever you're doing, go to my house. Break <laughs> in. You know where the secret key is, bro? Go get it. Break yeah. in. <laughs> uh, Bowie's going to bark. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Just say, not now, Bowie. Get in that car. And so then while he's doing that, I go to the gate agent. And I'm like, hey, what what is the latest I can get through this gate? <laughs> <laughs> what is like, like, like how long? And because I Google and it's like for international flights, they close, yeah. they close the doors to the plane like 30, 40 minutes before takeoff. Mm-hmm. But. This ain't a regular international. This is Mexico, baby. Whoa. So they're like, we can let you on 10 minutes before takeoff. Wow, and, and that feels unsafe. It feels <laughs> wrong. But I'm like, okay. So I'm just waiting. I'm pacing. I'm like fucking. Wait, you know, but you have to then go out of security. To, I'm not in security. They, oh, won't, you're, let me, they won't even, they won't oh, let me in. Yeah, okay, right. right. Yeah, so you have to get through the, he's security. He's out the side because he doesn't have a passport. I'm just on the street, baby. <laughs> you know that that meme of uh from from True Detective where... 
where uh, McConaughey's chain smoking the cigarette looking at his phone. Right. I'm like refreshing how long it's going to take to get down the 405. Uh, <laughs> Jack, turn on and find my friends. Let me watch you drive. Yeah, he did. He it. shared it. <gasps> oh, that's so funny. Uh, yeah, now, awesome. when you were getting on the plane, was everybody else already seated being like, Why oh, yeah. Taking, yeah. Why are we I'm taking on, off? Yeah. And then, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> oh, it was. it's not a great feeling. But, know. you know, they, they kept the... There was one person after me. Wow. Hey, really? it wasn't your fault then. Yeah. Wasn't. It wasn't your fault. Some other schmuck. Hey, have you played Kirby? No, I haven't played the new Kirby. It's fun. It looks great. scary. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just a good time. Yeah. It's not that hard. Although yeah, there was one boss, I think maybe it took me two tries, but yeah. that was actually also because my fucking switch fucking the switch controllers. They fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby is also he sucked up a car. In this. He sucks up a car. He, he sucks, sucks up more than that. The car Goals. is just the surface. The, the cars that you see in the trailer. <laughs> That that's barely. What are you talking about? Sucks up doors. He basically instead you of suck just suck up a door. So instead of just <laughs> sucking up goblins and taking their powers, <laughs> he can basically he just sucks up other stuff. About time. And he can fly. Yeah. He can become a car. He well, can, he could already fly. Right, but he can fly like a like, like a, a glider. Yeah. Like and so what makes the game so fun? This is a free advertisement for the game. Is that each as soon as you get kind of bored of the mechanics, it's like, hey, well, what if this game was just a racing game? And those That's levels cool. are just erasing. It's like, oh, what if this game was a boat game? It's like, oh, hey, well, actually, wait, what if this game was an airplane dodging game? Tell me yeah. more about this door. What, what yeah, happens? Well, sometimes you just suck up a door and then yeah. you open the door. Oh, that <laughs> makes no sense. Sometimes it's very simple. And you just yeah. have to suck up a door and tear the door down. And what, And you couldn't just turn the doorknob? Mm-mm. Well, he he, well he's have, Kirby. He he's, has little nubby yeah. hands. He only knows how to breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> hey, everybody. Normally, I bleep the inappropriate stuff we say on the podcast, but there's too much here to be bleeped. Um, so I just wanted to warn you, if you're listening to this in front of kids or something, maybe skip ahead for the next four minutes. We're talking about beloved cartoon character Kirby and other things that he might suck up. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, what about, I mean, imagine getting a blowjob from Kirby. Oh, my God, it'd be too much. We're going there. He'd suck your dick right off. (laughs) So, okay, Miles, what do you think would happen? I just feel like it'd be crazy. And let's just say this clearly. The topic that you, Miles (laughs) Bonsignore, the podcast producer for us, would like to discuss next. Also, all these people from Indianapolis are listening. (laughs) I have a journal that's just, (laughs) what if you get a blowjob from Kirby? What would it be like to get a blowjob from Kirby? (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry. I think that he would, one, (laughs) suck your dick right off. And then he'd become (laughs) a little dick. And then he becomes your dick. Yeah. That'd be kind of interesting. And then, like, maybe attacks you with your own dick. Yeah. He has dick powers then. Sorry about that, everybody. Also, the powers of the Kirby. <laughs> We're going to have to apologize next week. In this game, the power is like Mayor, evolved. Mayor Hog, Hoghorn is listening. <laughs> I'm sure there's fan art of it. Oh, I, of, of Kirby sucking a D? Yes. But whose D do you think the fan art is Fucking the most popular one is? Like Bowser. Mario? Yeah, Mario, Mario. I'm looking it up. No. I'm well, Googling it so you don't have to. In the look, Kirby the universe. is going to Google it. It would, pro- g- it would probably be the tree. That has the kind of nose you think who it's the, blows. Yeah. You think and it's he probably tree? has like a tree. Guys. Dip. Yeah. I don't know if we want to go there. All right, I just Googled Kirby sucking a dick. <laughs> the first result no. is on Pornhub. I, are you going to watch it? Is it if somebody dressed as Kirby sucking a dick? Oh, I clicked. <laughs> Zach's watching porn on no, the no, podcast. No, well, I, Zach's I, watching porn on the podcast. I clicked on the images and they are hilarious. I, Miles, I'm your boss, so I can't show you this. Legally, But yeah. Keith, you're my friend, yeah, so I'll you show you show this me. one, <laughs> which is hilarious. Describe That's, it to the audience. This Describe. one is better. Yeah. It's like so this is a... I'm sucking a dick. This is Kirby. This is a that three-panel comic. That one's intense. It's yeah. a, a very veiny, hot dog-looking dick coming towards Kirby. <laughs> it gets inside his mouth, and then he transforms and now has a giant dick. Yeah. I, this one is for Kirby. Oh, God. God, your fucking Google search images results are. This is crazy. four Kirby's of different colors, all just. <laughs> <laughs> that one's really around, funny, but it's around a dick. It's just yeah, it's covered porn. In, it's porn. Oh, well, that this was one's fun. cool too. This one's Kirby with is that a dick on, I think that is <laughs> five times his size and giant legs. There's some good fan art out there. Yeah, back to the Indianapolis document. I mean, most of these people talk about how Mass Avenue has restaurants and bars i mean that's what you're there for though is restaurants and bars yeah that that seemed to be the main you can't thing get that like, anywhere else yeah. coffee and food i'm like oh wow so special i bet they do <laughs> you know what though i do love a little local, local coffee shop 
This is just to say that they have big names come in and perform there. Like you don't get to claim them. Yeah. Just because performers come in and do shows there doesn't mean you have good celebrity shows. No. That's that's every city has that. But right. if you grew up outside of Indianapolis, Indianapolis is a improvement yeah. because big names come there. The biggest one I'm excited about is the gondola ride on the canal. Oh, that's really fun. We had a gondolier that sang to us in Italian while we sipped wine and it was fucking magical. I'm like that. That sounds pretty good. That sounds nice. That one sounds good. I'm into that one. Uh, and a lot of these do start out with Keith isn't totally wrong, but <laughs> here's something I do like about where I am. And then they were mad that you thought Indianapolis was in Iowa, which is, yeah, which is <laughs> absolutely, absolutely fair. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, Doja Cat is in the news. Can I pause at a different topic real quick? Yeah, for sure. I don't care. <laughs> okay, that's. I mean, like there were some okay points in that document. So I will say that I you know, think higher of Indianapolis than I did. Yeah. You did. So you, you feel like you've been changed a little, a little. I wouldn't be like upset if I did a show there. I, right. I'm sure I could find something fun to do. Well, now, mm -hmm. <laughs> now you'll be thrilled. If they'll have me, <laughs> oh, he will protest. Maybe. Oh, what if they, did? what if people are like, come to the show and protest? what if a bunch of people bought tickets and they didn't show? Mayor so it Ho looks like I'm going to have like a 250 Ooh. like big old audience and then it's nobody. It's nobody I bet you Mayor Hog Honker himself will be there. Hog set. <laughs> Don't you know, say his name. Uh, anyways, Riddle uh, me this. Uh -oh. yeah. I'm summer's coming. Uh huh. Summer <laughs> loving. It's hot. I'm wearing shorts right now. You can't Had see it. me yeah. a blast. Miles uh -huh. crops my dick out now entirely so it doesn't have to blur it. Well, yeah, I don't want to keep blurring. <laughs> Classic Kirby situation. Am yeah, I right? Really? I am excited for the warmth. I love it. My body thrives in it. However, uh -oh. I feel like I've really gotten into a groove with my clothes and my layers and <laughs> I no longer know who I am. In shorts. Oh. oh, same. You guys know that I've been getting on my little thick boy journey, getting getting nice yeah. and thicky. Yeah. So thick. My shorts don't <laughs> fit anymore. Really? Ooh. I went down to Mako as established in my other story, and mm -hmm. my shorts don't fit. Yeah. So I, I was only wearing like 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 basketball shorts stuff with like with the drawstring. All my oh, buttons I are too tight. Shorts. Yeah. Well, I looked cute. Yeah. I mean, I just for me, and not about you. I I personally. I don't like sweatpants. I don't like yeah, gym shorts. Right, right. Don't like mm. those kinds of clothes. So I don't know who I am. I, I feel like all my outfits are sweaters or jackets or yeah. pants. And like, can I even wear Crocs with shorts? What does that look like? I used to be an SSBD boy, short sleeve button down, but that's not my thing no more. Maybe, maybe I'll join you back. I don't know. Who am I? Let's let's I'm workshop it. I'm on my way back it. there right now. I'm playing with the open. It's hard to look sexy in shorts for it, me. Yeah. For me personally. Why? I, I've got long gants. I mean, Keith, those are nice shorts, but they're... And, and you know what, though? The top complements the shorts. Keith's wearing a Hawaiian style well, top. Well, it's not Hawaiian. Aloha. It's, it's, Aloha it's, it's style. also a tighter pattern than an Aloha typically. Yeah, I would say yeah. it's not Aloha at all. You're it's totally erroneous on all floral. accounts. It's a floral. He's wearing all birds. He's wearing an orange And I got an orange shirt that matches the, the delicate amounts of orange in the shirt. And then I have a blue that brings out some of the blue outlines. I mean, you know, I thought it It's out. really good. Keith, yeah. And Zach it's is summery. wearing a winter coat. Yeah. And sweatpants. <laughs> it's too <and> Crocs. <laughs> it's too hot <laughs> to be wearing my outfit. Yeah. But I'm not ready to let go yet. Yeah, I agree with the shorts thing. I just am like, I feel vulnerable. Like my legs or someone's going to come slap them. <laughs> mm. I'm not afraid of that. But I do say that, you know, mosquitoes, which now are in L.A., unfortunately. Oh, yeah, they are. Shorts make it the fair game. Everybody here, eat my legs. Eat mm. my legs right up, yum, little yum, mosquitoes. Yum, yum, yum. And they're aggressive. You hear about but this? There's multiple breeds here yeah, now. There's like oh, I know all about the new one. It's oh. actually been here for several years, yeah. but it's frustrating. That's this right. was, the, I mean, one of the main draws of one L.A. One of the things of moving to L.A. is no weather, no, no bugs. No yeah. mosquitoes. That's right. Now we got mosquitoes. Well, the planet's burning, baby. Plants burning and mosquitoes. I can't the color war. I can't, can't take it anymore. We did the it bugs already. <laughs> We'd all if die. We gotta live through it. Can't it take the mosquitoes with it? I know. I wonder if mosquitoes it's are like, part of that. I'll kill the bees. No, I like the bees. <laughs> yeah, bees are I good. I think the bees are dope. Mm. I'm not afraid of no bees. The other day I was somewhere. I ain't afraid of no bees. Bee landing on my hand. Everybody's like, Keith, there's a bee on your hand. I'm like, yeah. Good. It'll be fine. These are good. <laughs> He's not going to sting me. Also, cherish that moment. You yeah. never know when your bee sting will be your last. It's true. I love, cherish yeah. it. I wasn't afraid of that bee at all. I ain't afraid of no bee. There are bees all over my yard, and they never sting me. But mosquitoes? 
You can get fucked. Fuck a mosquito. Uh, when a mosquito comes nah. to my house, I'm furious. It's I, And they're always in my house. And they're going to eat me while I'm sleeping. You know what I do love? Okay, I do love killing a mosquito. But weirdly... Oh, I hate when they're full of juice. I kind of <laughs> prefer when they're full of juice. No, even though it's that not means, just my blood. It's someone else's blood all over me. Yeah. It, it also usually means that they just ate me. So yeah. I should be upset. But it's there's something satisfying about it. Like, aha, you died. You died full. It, here's a question. <laughs> you your last meal. Is it, I mean, what we're describing, I feel like, is writing on the wall, but I don't know if it's true that, is this summer, hot boy summer? It's actually short king spring, baby. Oh, it's <laughs> short king <laughs> is that spring? Is just yeah. made up right no, now? No, it's yeah. that's that's really short funny. king spring. Yeah. How do I, Zach, as, as somebody, how do I participate in short king spring? You, you, you worship me. I worship you, got it. Cool. You, you, find, you turn yeah. the tables and say, I don't like this, and I wish I were you. Is it appropriate? Yeah, I, I don't want to appropriate. How's being tall, Miles? It's good. How's your herniated disc? Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. Herniated disc sucks. Yeah. Did you get your shot yet? Yeah, it didn't do much. It I was like 15%. That. Yeah, it sucks. 15% health, but they're going to give me more. I was mean about it. And I, I hope you feel better. No, it's okay. <laughs> Put needles in your back. Needles you said in your you back. Got, you did the other needles all over your body the other day. I did do acupuncture. And how did you, you said you were a vibration. It was crazy. I, I, so I remember I filmed the acupuncture video with you guys years ago at this mm -hmm. point, fucking 10 years ago. No. But uh, it was like four years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, it, uh, so I did acupuncture and I was, when, they, when she first did it, like you don't really feel the needles going in, you know, much. And then she was like, all right, I'm going to leave you here. And she would like touch parts of my body and then she would touch the like most tender part of my back uh -huh. where like the disc is. And she touched the part of my body and she'd be like, do you feel like any correlation here? Like when I press on this part of your body, does the pain, the pressure lessen on your back? And I'd be like, oh no, not really there. Oh yeah, they're there a little bit. She'd be like, okay, cool, great. And like she did a bunch of the needles or whatever. She left the kind room. Kind of flicking the needles. Yeah, she's like, flicking the needles. She leaves the room. I'm like face down. All of a sudden I feel like I'm like that feeling when you're wasted drunk on the bed and the room is spinning. You start to get the spins? I got the spins. I open my eyes and I'm like staring down face down and like the the ground. It's like when your vision is just like shaking uh -huh. a little bit. It was so fucking weird. It was just like my I was vibrating. I do acupuncture every single week. That has never happened to me. And I, I'm jealous. The first time I mean, that's how Eugene was like electrified. From yeah, me. some people I think just something about their nerves. It just yeah. something happens with the needles. My and the fucking nerves. chakras were exploding <laughs> out, of my, out of my body, but it was crazy. And then uh, she like did that for a while longer and then eventually that like stopped after like 10 minutes, but it was kind of intense. It sounds it. it was kind of intense. And then I flipped over and uh, she did like a bunch of she pulled those out. She I flipped over. She did a bunch of other ones and I left and then I like have not had that good of a pain day in a very long time. Like maybe since before I even got my shots. So you're saying the day after your acupuncture, you felt day of you felt great. I felt f way, way better. Like I mm. walked in limping every step hurting. Yeah. And then like I got in my car and I was like, oh, yeah, I can, can still feel it. A couple hours later, I was like walking to the kitchen and I realized I had not thought about my back pain for like 30 minutes. That's sick. Wow. And I was like, that's crazy. I, I haven't yeah. had that type of relief wow. in uh, a while. People so. ask me a lot because like I, I do acupuncture, cupping and this weird massage every week. Yeah. And Whoa. they... <laughs> yeah, I mean, because okay. I'm yeah, in a lot sure. of pain, dude. Yeah, all no, I just like absolutely. not going. I don't, don't don't tell me what the weird massage is at all. <laughs> <laughs> the weird massage. The weird massage. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I would love to tell you. I'll okay, come back. Well, but people ask me like, what it does it do? And I have no fucking idea. Right. I just I have every tool in my mm -hmm. toolkit, and I throw them all at the pain, yeah. and I don't know what does what, and I frankly don't care, and I'm right. just whatever works. But I, I woke up this one day where randomly I couldn't move my neck more than like 30 degrees in each direction. Like I just yeah. oh was no. it was like I got into wow. a car crash and I went to acupuncture. Mm -hmm. That's when I like started again regularly. And this dude just fucking brought me back to life. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. Yeah. So I don't know. I was thinking about the two because like I went in being like, I don't know what this is. I don't really even know if it works, but I don't need it. doesn't even matter. Like I just am in so much pain. Me, sure. Me try, right, me, it doesn't matter what if it works or not. I went in and it did help me. But then I was also thinking about it and like I've dealt with doctors lots of my life and stuff like that. 
Western medicine, they also don't fucking know. Like, there's so much shit. They're just like, well, did this work? I don't know. I guess that didn't work. Like, if they you're typically in- say, try this for a few weeks, and if it doesn't work, come back try and it. see me. Yeah, so right. it doesn't mean, like, this will work. Yeah, exactly. It's, this has worked for someone before. Exactly. Maybe you do. Right. So it's just funny to, like, that I obviously, like, the big joke is just, like, woo-woo medicine and being like, oh, Eastern medicine. Like, I, none of that stuff works if you're, like, a hard hard ass science guy but it's just like i don't know doctors don't also are like yeah, doctors yeah we tried this but we don't know like you know you know the shot that i take for to control my chronic pain it's just like there's like 30 of them yeah and i try one and i just have to like close my eyes and <laughs> right. say how do you feel zach better or worse and then if that one doesn't work we go to the next one and it's like right. it's just it's wild throwing shit at the wall see what sticks exactly i but, haven't told you about my crazy massage i was certain it? i had it's like a tens unit which is what? Oh we, yeah, the, you have told me about the electric massage. Yeah, he stands on a mat, barefoot. Yeah, I lay. My stomach is on a, another, like a conductor, and his body conducts electricity, and his hands are the tens unit Whoa. as he's massaging me. So he's massaging me while my body's going, bzz, and then like he'll like grab my my shin, and my foot just goes bzz, like like it. Wow. just it's forcing my muscles to contract. Um, but you like you just feel tingly all over your body. But what's happening is like he's just really getting in there into the muscle. This and so guy like, feels one step away from supervillain. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, oh, like, like if he Pikachu. can make this portable and he can go <laughs> yeah. around and just shock people in life, he, he is just like an electric electricity based supervillain. That's yeah. wild. Well, it's it's the tens unit, like any yeah. of those things, it's forcing your muscles to contract. So there are times where like I'm basically paralyzed. Like yeah. he'll grab my wrists my God. and my hand like like shoots open uh-huh. and I like I I try and just live in the moment, but I also sometimes think like, can I move my finger right now if I wanted to? And it's like sort of. Wow. Yeah, it's cool. Is this in his lair or at a doctor's office? Yeah, you go down like 30 (laughs) 30 floors. It's a spiral staircase. Lots of dripping concrete. Scan your retina. (laughs) <laughs> go through the door that is really wild did you do by the way did you, you did the cryo thing the cryo video oh yeah how did that help i cryo is one of the best feeling things for me really yeah and i actually i haven't done it in a little bit but um yeah i mean the the place that we went pause though we have buddies there they let me come back and nice. it, i feel incredible Oh, that's cool. Afterwards. I, yeah, I'm interested in that. I want to do the freeze man, the ice man, Wim Hof thing. Uh-huh. Where he it's like cold. Takes you into the, yeah. It's it's <laughs> challenging for me, but I mean, I've also done the cold plunge there. Right. I like the cryo more. Mm-hmm. It's three minutes of you're standing in this cold chamber and you're like, why the fuck did I do this? Why the <laughs> fuck did I do this? This is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then the second the door opens, you just like, I don't know if it's adrenaline or what, yeah. but uh, <laughs> it it is the only thing that gives me like 24 hours of relief. Wow. And then it, then I'm back to pain. So like that's right. un- that's unsustainable. Yeah. That's not and it's <laughs> expensive for anybody, right? Mm-hmm. So like that's right. not really going to solve it, but on days where I'm really bad or to mm-hmm. kind of have that as part of the rotation, it, it does help. What if yeah. you just started going to gas stations in the Midwest and spending 5 minutes in like the beer fridge? Oh, I love that. And then coming out that's probably a good cheap way to do it if you're in an, another if you're not in a place with a cry of like just go every day just stand in the beer fridge for ten minutes there you go you got yeah. your cold therapy. So when we were filming our no recipe road trip for Food Network, we we, we were in a bakery. Yeah. They have one of those walk in freezers. <laughs> Love a walk in freezer. And it's cold. <laughs> I in between setups like I just went in there and I yeah. basically was like oh sick this is free cryo mm-hmm. yeah and I was in there for one minute two minutes three and like people were like are you. Okay, okay, like, are you that... are you dying? I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm good. I just this is, <laughs> yeah. but like, it's kind of a crazy thing to all of a sudden just go <laughs> into a freezer and not come out. I used to do that when I worked at a coffee shop. We had a huge walk-in freezer with like all the cold brew kegs and whatever. I just would go in there because it's so fucking hot in New York in the summer. So I would just oh, like yeah. go in and just sit in there like on my phone and my lunch break, <laughs> and it'd be like, yeah, that feels so good. Uh-huh. Yeah, I love it. But if you get, I always get, we get worried because it's like the door fucking sealed <laughs> shut. And it's like, if I get locked in here, I'm dead in two hours or whatever. <laughs> I was always thinking the shining when he gets locked in there. Yeah. He doesn't freeze. It's not even a freezer. It's just a pantry. It's just a pantry. <laughs> but I think about it. I think about the shining. Is, is, is it spring? Has it sprung? Is it spring? Yeah. There's not really seasons in LA, so it's hard to, it's I think hard it's, to do this. I but. think it's spring because June, middle June is summer start. So it must be spring. April showers bring me flowers. Give me your shirt, Keith. Let's see if I look okay. good. 
in the last couple I don't months, know if I've been sweating or not. In the last couple months, I do feel like I sort of like woke up and years had gone by. Yeah, you can take my little jacket that shrunk in the wash. Hey, I mean, hey, this is you know, it's it's bad. familiar. It's Zach you used wear. to wear these. Mm-hmm. I used to roll them up. This used to look like a Zach look for sure. How could we get you? Maybe what if you? Up. What if you went all the way to like, I don't know, reflective pastels? What would define reflective? Well, you know, like the huh. plasticky, like windbreaker material. Ooh. Oh, what if you yeah. just were like a windbreaker pastel boy? Because those are light. You still get to wear your jackets. Yeah. They're very thin. They're material. very thin. They're very, very thin. dumb. Yeah. The patterns are dumb. I need it to be dumb. <laughs> and dumb. then you could also still wear like similar track pants, which are still thinner, perhaps keeping you cooler. Uh, maybe you can even get the dumb ones that have the zipper up the side. I'm wondering how do I layer the okay, so right now I like layered and oversized. So maybe I should just do the shortest mm. stuff possible. Like short shorts where my Kirby's are almost falling out. Uh-huh, uh, right. Tank tops, but then like straps all over me. Oh, like an old hot topic look, but on the chest rather than the pants. Yeah. That's cool. You remember your cargo <laughs> pants that had the the X? Yeah. yeah. Do that on my short pants. shorts. They were cool. That's cool. I, I remember I had a pair of jeans in um, high school that had, or it was a friend of mine had like metal pieces hanging off, like those Hot Topic ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did the school li- like it or not? No, people Because they were those, I remember when people wore that kind of stuff in Carthage that like they would like immediately be like, oh, that's outside of the dress code. Yeah. And they were like, no, it's not. It's like, yeah, it is. It's like, well, show me it written down. So that's actually a great story of my brother Brian accidentally being a hero to the goth kids in Carthage. <laughs> so my brother Whoa. Brian, who was very like sort of anti humor type of thing, mm-hmm. but he also like just for whatever reason in high school, he started wearing a cloak, like a full, an actual <laughs> cloak. Wow. I, 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 you know, all the way to his feet, green cloak that he had Hell someone yeah. make at a hood and it was cool. And he just wore a cloak. We were talking about this on Guilty Pleasure the other day. I want fashion capes to come back. So yes. Brian's always been ahead of the curve. So here. he was wearing the cloak. Now, in that time when the Matrix came out <laughs> and Columbine happened, a lot of oh, schools yeah. were like, oh, you can't wear long coats. You can't wear uh, baggy pants. They were just, everyone sort of over freaked out. And they the were also like, the problem. they were also like video games. So a yeah. teacher said, Brian, you can't wear that cloak. And he says like, why not? It's not a trench coat. It's not like all these things you say. It's like, yeah, but it's it's too long. And he's like, I don't think that's in the dress code. It's like, show me the dress code. And he's <laughs> how like, old well, is Brian at this? This point? season, like a sophomore in high school. Okay. Maybe, maybe <laughs> so, it's I'm, big, I'm picturing right. Brian was like this in fifth grade as well. I, yeah. and, and like, I think teachers were afraid of Brian because yeah. he was a genius <laughs> and he was like, he's a little intimidating. Yeah, he's so he's like, show it to me. And he goes all the way. To like the principal's office and he's like, well, show me where it says in the dress code that I can't wear a cloak. They pull it out. They realize nowhere in the actual written dress code does it say anything about trench coats, anything about baggy pants, anything about cloaks. (laughs) So then suddenly he's like, so you were just lying. (gasps) And they were like, (laughs) uh, uh, and then all the trench coat kids who had gotten like reprimanded for wearing trench coats they were unreprimanded and actually had to be apologized to. So he became Whoa. a hero to the goth kids, although he did not want to be their hero. Wow. So all these goth kids are coming up like, hey man, that was awesome how you stuck it to the school. Like, I just wanted to wear my cloak. <laughs> like, awesome. I wasn't trying to be your hero. <laughs> and now, now all these goth kids are constantly talking to You're Brian. awesome. Like, he wasn't trying. He a wasn't goth trying prince. To, uh, so it, it was a very cool little moment. So that is something. If you are being told there's a rule, you need to see the rule. Yeah, You need someone to show it to you because if it actually exists, it has to be written down somewhere. It has to actually be in the student handbook or the school handbook. If it's not there, they can't enforce it. Mm. They can enforce it for next year. They can add it to the book, but they can't just penalize you for something they say they can't. I'm picturing getting pulled over for doing 90 and a 30 <laughs> and be like, show me where it says. Show me. Show me. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think that's how you should use this. Prove it. Prove it. It's mostly officer. school. Schools are out there lying all the time. Yeah, schools, be schools lying. out there lying. That's right. Math's not real. Math's not real. <laughs> it's not real. Zach, did you have any thoughts on the Doja Cat thing? <laughs> you want to tell me about, about the Cat? what is uh, Zach before this is like? I think we do a pop culture podcast. Yeah, he said like, pop you know, culture round Doja, Doja Cat, Cat is like quitting music. I'm like, what are you talking about? She just won a Grammy. Yeah, so Doja Cat. Doja, we love Doja. Doja. I she, like Doja a lot. Yeah, she's super cool. I'm, uh-huh. I'm a big fan. But uh, she went on a little bit of a Twitter rant. She was saying that she was going to quit, where she was going to perform somewhere in South America, I believe, a festival. Yeah. It got canceled, and she 
it, you know, it got canceled. It wasn't her fault. And then she didn't come out of her hotel room to say hello, I believe, to fans. And so fans were just going crazy against her on, on social media mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to reprimand her. And it, it was kind of this discussion of what do you owe your fandoms? And she she went on, you know, said a bunch of things like, I'm not built for this. Screw this. I'm out. I quit. I'm not yeah. built for this life. Um, and she's still maybe. I mean, I get like this pop culture roundup email every day and it's like those are still quitting i don't know but, but she won it, a gram. i think she'll do, i mean it's like first of all that's crazy like celebrities don't know you anything they're not your friends celebs <laughs> are not your friends and you don't actually know them yeah. but i was thinking and this, is, this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna uh convolute this point is that i am grateful for the listeners of course and i don't think i say oh that my enough. god of course you guys are here listening and I'm i grateful. feel like you know what i want you to think that i'm your friend <laughs> should, <laughs> well that's what you're right that's the danger it, should i be saying Thanks to all my fans. I love all my fans more often. Do fans want to hear that? I feel like it. Mm. Do they even want to identify I think as fans? It comes off cheap when people say, I love all my fans. I think it does. Because I think cheap. that a lot of times, like, that's just pop stars saying that. And maybe they do mean it. But I don't know. I feel like calling them fans is almost belittling. I, I sometimes will listen to some shows I listen to where they're like, we want to thank all our fans. I'm like, man, I ain't your fucking fan. Yeah, I right. Just, no, right. I just listen to you. 100%. Don't tell me. And then, so, you know what? I don't. You, I, you're not my fan. What does a you're fan just my, make? You're you're the person hanging out with us in your ears. My yeah. followers, listeners. <laughs> I don't know. They all sound followers wrong sounds to me. culty, but is technically true because they follow you. Like, thanks for watching. I for feel listening. like a lot of people listening right now. If we were like, hey, we just want to thank all our fans, it's they'd be like, dumb. fuck you. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> what about my course. supporters? My supporters. My listeners. My listeners is I think. I, the I, way to... Oh, hey, here's something cool. Hey. We're nominated for three. Webbies. Hell yeah. And we need our fans <laughs> to vote because that's how it works. That's so I need right. you to give your email to them. This so is actually that you like, can say I'm good. It is kind of huge. Okay. There's a couple that's of huge. the digital award shows. We right. talked about how the streamies fucked us over and then turned out they didn't. Um <laughs> You remember that? I did, that was a one a different yeah. apology podcast I had uh, to do. That's right. The Webbies are, are big. It's a big deal. It um yeah. a, a lot of huge brands, and every year we kind of roll our eyes at the Webbies, mm. but not this year because uh, we're in it. Because we're in it. But it's always like you know like best digital show. And we're still against impossible yeah, odds. It's like meme like, tweets and Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy and Fallon's digital channel, Sesame Street. I'm like, that, dang, dude, I don't think we should be crazy. Sesame Street. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. I remember last year it was like like behind the scenes for the new Star Wars movie. And I'm like, that's how is that a web series? But that's what we're up against. You know, yeah. these are like the biggest brands in the world, like Nikes and uh-huh. <laughs> Nike. That's the only brand Nikes I can think of. And yeah. Adidas. But we got nominated for three of them. We, you, the Try Guys oh, yeah. for the best whatever. It's just best, entertainment best video. Just we're with that a recipe for best comedy, for comedy series and eat the menu for best food series. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so Keith was nominated for three. I was nominated for two. Um, it feels good. <laughs> three for three. Feels good. I mean, it's very I, I was definitely like because we got an email from our PR team being like, congrats on your web- Webby noms. And but it didn't have the link to them. So I just searched and I finally found the Try Guys one. I'm like, oh, that's cool. We got nominated yeah. and like, that's cool. And then later in the day, Nick sends an email out and being like, we're nam- Webby nominated. I'm like, oh, cool. And I was like, yeah, Try Guys. Like, oh, without a recipe. He's like, eat the menu. That's huge. This people think this <laughs> should win an award. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should. I also filmed one yesterday, so it felt very that's serendipitous. Really cool. Which one is it? That's nominated. Uh, it's just the show. Oh, the show in the general. Show. Oh, that's the awesome. product of eat the menu that's is really what good. the people want. Now I am against Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Mythical Kitchen. It's so tough. Uh, another large brand. And then s- some guy who I need to look up because it's just some guy. <laughs> and it oh, was is like, it? Um, yeah. Some young guy. I'm like, I need to look up this guy. He's probably like me. Yeah. No chance at winning this. <laughs> so for the Webbies, there is what the the council Thinks. Vote, thinks is the best, and yeah. then there's the audience. Right. So we got two chances to win a little springy there's award no here. no way the council's going to be like... <laughs> The one where he eats garbage for an hour. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. That'd be awesome. But though. maybe. Yeah. I think it. every single episode is like a miniature version of Super Size Me. Yeah, pretty much. And I think, I was actually realizing yesterday, I've probably eaten the same amount of garbage in the Eat the Menu history as that guy ate in Super Size Me for that year. Absolutely. Because I'm eating so much in every sitting, and I've done about thir- uh, uh, in the high 30s, almost 40 of these now. Mm. So like, that's a lot of garbage. 
Right. That's a right, lot guys? Of, that's trophy a, award? That's a lot of garbage, Award Keith. winning? I think that's fair. Award, so I want a spring. I want I'm a spring thinking trophy. in this moment about, you know, some of the most impactful mm. documentaries of the last 20 years, Super Size Me and Inconvenient Truth, Bowling for Columbine, yeah. and how they affected virtually nothing. And how uh, uh, really you think they've affected nothing? Yeah, fast food is as prominent as it's ever been. They do have to post yeah. their calorie count on the menu now. It's just a little moment of quick depression. For yeah, me. that's true. Documentaries oh, yeah. exposed. They don't fix. Yeah, it's up to know. us to fix Boy, except for, for the one is. with the guy. Uh, the the Robert whatever who actually the jinx the jinx he convicted was convicted that so that one actually congratulations we did <laughs> that's right do you know my cat was found on Robert Durst's property really that's hilarious yeah. that's wild your yeah. childhood cat was found on Robert Durst's property uh huh yeah he grew wow. up so uh, Robert Durst his like home yeah. was across the street from friends of mine <gasps> and. Uh, there was a stray stray litter. Oh my god! And that's where my cat Cooper came from. That's wild. And he, he died, too right? was a killer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Robert just died. Yeah, my cat oh, died. Your cat also died. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's so exciting with the Webby nom. I mean, obviously cool. this is a Webby. Ad- We've already winning yes, podcast. You've already technically won a Webby. I have the Webby. same amount of Webbies as us, right? I'm a now. Webby award winning podcast and, producer. And uh, soon, though, I might have more Webbies than you. That'd be cool. Oh. Soon. I mean, I hope for, it, it makes no sense that we have the same amount of Webbies. <laughs> it's good. I mean, can you win <laughs> both? Can you, no can you win the board certified Webby and the audience Webby? Or do the, does the board say, okay, well, they won know. the audience one? I think you can win both. That'd be cool. I, look, I'm not going to. I want the audience one. I want the board certified one. Of I want course. I want what I imagine is like a stuffy council <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting in like an amphitheater. Yeah. And, and then they like walk up. Doom, doom, doom. It's like um, uh, like in Loki, the the fucking judges. And, mm. and then they go presenting to the council and they open up a laptop and it's like, oh, my ass. And it's Keith <laughs> eating everything. And nice. I don't ever say that. <laughs> oh, I'm my eating. Ass. Well, I'm eating. Is it like a? Is it like the academy where you can join? So it's like Tana Mojo, <laughs> Ren Link, Logan Paul. Right? Is it no. just and, uh, the kid? I'm who telling makes toys. you, this is the big time. See, the streamies gives it to Tana. Tana ain't ain't nominated for the Webby. What's she up to? This is the big times, Miles. Yeah. We're we're this we're we're one. up. We're we're with the best of the it best. It used to be just a tech and innovation. Hmm. Oh, like award right. show and then they open it up because tech obviously started including the internet and they're like well internet also has like personalities and internet has shows so then it's like a very widespread web hmm. award show thing. here's a question should we be proud of our streamy knowing that tana mojo won the highest honor well uh she's the best creator <laughs> well we won the highest <laughs> honor once too that's what i'm saying so should we be proud of that i think you should yeah <laughs> i think so okay. yeah i, I think it so. changed so much with her. She trailbla- She was a trailblazer. Yeah, documentaries don't make impacts, but Tanacon. Tana did. The Tanacon. Yeah. The Tanacon documentary, I think, actually did have a lasting impact. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Super Size Me didn't, but the Tanacon documentary was really good. Actually, documentaries <laughs> about. You guys want to start over? Con- <laughs> yeah, Should we start, start the whole episode? Talks top? about failed conventions are entertaining. Really fun. You know, Fire Festival, entertaining. Oh, there so were two. Good. You get to watch two different ones. Thrilling. Yeah. That's Tanacon. Fun thrilling i never whatever happened to that like when we're young festival i thought that was going to be a huge flop hasn't happened yet it hasn't happened yet still young okay cool i heard that might be the next fire festival but then somebody was like no i don't know i don't know everything on the internet's fake i don't know <laughs> yeah there was some weird stories about that where one of the bands was like we don't know that we're playing this but yeah. it seems to be real we'll we'll find out soon enough i don't know You're of course right. there was a music festival happening outside right now and we could just go out and listen to music yeah i had a really great dream, but it was a sad dream. Oh no! Where I woke up so devastated. It was it was very vivid. And I, look, I know you're thinking dreams are never interesting. Well, this one's gonna be. Here we go. Let's try it. <laughs> the nice. context here is that I was at Huey Stonefish's wedding, which I in real life was not invited to and already happened. Nice. Not not something I take personally. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that That's, I was those not are the invited in real life. Yes. And I so I don't know why. And he uh, was having a. There was a, an optional Sabbath 
at his wedding where for like six hours and I texted him and I'm like, hey, man, how Jewish is this going to be? And he texts back and goes real Jewish. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to skip that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) This is what happened in the dream. dream. Okay. Okay. So if any anyone can decode the dream out there, let me know what you think about that. (laughs) Anyway, I discover a new musical artist and she is incredible and she has no followers yet and i'm like and then i see her in person and it's just me and for whatever reason it's just me and her performing in this ballroom and she's like experimental kind of like 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 a remy wolf vibe but like even even more almost Mm. like bordering on on noise pop and and met like little metal and it's like holy shit and she has this big persona and lots of makeup and crazy hair and i'm like this is fucking awesome and i i post about it and then like her fans are like wow zach knows about this music he's so cool and then she sees me and is like zach we should become best friends i'm like yeah and then i and i loved it i remember Mm. hearing the song in my (laughs) dream and i'm like this fucking slaps and then i wake up and it's not real and i like Mm. it's like i Mm. i i I fell in love with a new artist that doesn't exist and i'll never be able to well no remy's real do you not know remy wolf no, sorry. Oh, Remy's dope. She's cool. I feel like she's I don't opening have... for Lord on tour right now. That's, That's awesome. how you know she's cool. Oh, Zach, do you make Spotify playlists? And Keith, you guys both have really good music taste, I'd... and I don't have any discerning music taste. And well, I'm, I'm trying to get into music. Well, can I ask you? Am I still allowed to be using Spotify post Joe? <sighs> I don't use Spotify. I use do YouTube I have to music. Cut that? Is that? <laughs> Is that like a controversial thing? <laughs> no. The no. biggest fucking platform in the world. If you shop at it, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Amazon's fucking evil. You can use Amazon lightly if you And you can buy way. my chicken sauce you on Amazon. You can buy chicken, <laughs> Keith's chicken sauce. Obviously, fucking, you know, yeah, Joe Rogan's evil. Spotify is the place to get music. Yeah, I have, okay. um, I have free Spotify. Yeah, okay, cool. Through a, like, influencer program. I also, <laughs> I also could have it, but I don't use Spotify. Not because I don't like Spotify. I actually think it is superior. Yeah. But I have YouTube music because I have YouTube premium. Oh. And so I listen. Is it all the same stuff? It's all the same. So I'm like, I listen to music and I listen to playlists and I listen to albums on YouTube. Also, you know, like about 50% of our podcast listenerships on Spotify. So what up? What up, people? We love you. Uh, Yeah, I do make Spotify playlists and I love it and I will share you mine. I would love to see it. I'll send you some YouTube some videos. <laughs> send you, yes, yeah, please. I'm I will. I think to... you should listen. I think everyone should actually look up Dottie Freyer and just listen to the most viewed song because it's the one he did on Eurovision that was like mm. the, the song. Because that's how Eurovision works. I didn't really understand how Eurovision worked mm. until I was actually fell down this hole. But yeah. basically, all the countries have their own mini competitions where it's mm. not only a good act, but you have to have a new song. And you have an app and act to do that song. You win and then you win for your country and you go represent your country at the Eurovision contest, which is hosted by whatever country won it last year. Oh, and you everyone goes. So there's a lot of like very visual, weird stuff. Some of it's very funny. Some of it's very serious. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's a band. Sometimes it's like a kind of a pop group like but it's all very it's just a big music variety competition show. It's Mm -hmm. the biggest deal ever, apparently. And this this guy, uh, he his story is so funny. I'll give you the brief version, but he <laughs> wrote a song for someone else to do to yeah. represent Iceland with. He's like, I wrote this cool song. I think it's cool. Yeah. Someone should do it. And then he's like, well, you need to find someone to do it. We can't find someone to do it for you. He was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So we found a friend who would sing it. They was going to go present it. And the friend at the last minute's like, I can't do it. I'm busy. I got to drop out. I'm, I'm ready. busy for Eurovision? <laughs> well, because wow. it was the local contest. Ah, this was the, just sure. to get to, he's like, ah, I don't think it'll, you know, I, I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the the mini comp- competition is like, well, why don't you just do it, Dothy? He's like, I don't really do that. And he's like, well, just do it. He's like, okay. Well, but for Eurovision, it has to be stupid. So he got <laughs> eight of his friends to form a fake band to perform this song. Yeah. And they perform the song and they do very, very, very simple dance moves that are <laughs> almost barely dance moves. And they advanced through because people loved it. Oh, and yeah. they got all the way through. And now they, perf- they performed with sweaters of their own faces on it so i would be wearing a sweater with my face each member was doing that Mm -hmm. and it's just this really great fun pop song and it's really a good song and then all of his other music has similar vibes Mm. but then his concert there was a middle section that was just all experimental synth and you know i loved it it was weird (laughs) it was really weird and alienating i loved it (laughs) and then it went back to dance dance pop and it was great uh but you should look up dothy frayer dotty makes music i think is what it is on instagram but it's good stuff and the music videos are weird. 
Yeah. Weird. Wow. <laughs> you should listen to that. Daddy I'm change. going to. I'm very excited. Yeah. I, I have nothing to add because we'll I haven't right listened yet, this. but I can't wait. That's my advice for you on who to listen to in music. But maybe you're not looking for musical advice. Maybe you're looking for something new. Get ready to rock out to uh, Miles Bonsignore. Come. Oh, God. What? <laughs> what come? Kirby? Way on the edge of the road. <laughs> Drive your car so fast that you can't see the road. Turn signal on and honk <laughs> in that horn. How would you not be able to see the road? Foggy night on a crystal clear night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. Sunglasses on and I'm going home. I like that line actually. My mom's at home making sauce. She's gonna <laughs> give me sauce. It's gonna taste real nice. <laughs> Sunglasses on and I'm going home. Foggy night on a crystal clear night. That's the end <laughs> of the song? <laughs> that song was really unexpected. You, did, you didn't listen to it before? No, no I never that's do. Good. That's good. What's up, Miles Nation? Woo! All right! All right, Captain! <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I've been a pirate. Have you ever wanted to live the life of a sailor. Oh, yeah. Have you ever wanted to have a little breakfast snack? Are you re- literally about to say Captain Crunch is your advice? Is he a sea captain? <laughs> is he about to crunchitize me over here? Crunchitize me, Captain! <laughs> <laughs> I, on a whim, was feeling depressed the other day. I bought a box of Captain Crunch. Have you been wanting to shred the top of your mouth while eating (laughs) breakfast? And and I had a big thing of Captain Crunch, and I've been eating it, and it's been just, wow. It's good. It's a good cereal. It's S-tier cereal. It's fucking so good. Hard-pressed for you to name me a better one. Oops, all berries. I definitely agree with that. Well, that's a (laughs) sub-tier. Which one did you say? All berries. All berries. Oops. No. Oops, all berries. You can't go for oops, all berries. I like oops, all berries. I haven't had it. Okay, so well, I'll have to try. But I do think Captain Crunch is not only a perf- a perfect cereal, yeah. but it's going to be good in a uh, trail mix. <laughs> <laughs> trail mix? You yeah. mean Chex Mix? No. You mean the one with pretzels and raisins no, and M&M's? that would be weird. No, 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 no. That that's would be weird. Not, it's not Why what do you I'm think that's less weird, Keith? That's a tra- <laughs> you think that, wait, that's are weirder. You, are you uh, talking I, I think it'd be better in a in like a sweet Chex Mix. No, a, a, a trail mix like you're ma- like um, like a po- a porg, a pog, not a pog. That's porn term. Gorp. Gorp. Good old raisins and peanuts. Good old raisins and peanuts and crunch. A pork. Good old raisins is, and crunch. I, name me the ingredients of your this trail mix. Okay. Peanut, Captain Crunch. Peanuts. Captain Crunch. Uh-huh. <laughs> raisins. Race. Now, hold the raisins. What? Good old raisins <laughs> and peanuts. <laughs> hold it's a gawk. A, 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 it's a it's a pro, it's a good pro. old Captain Crunch of peanuts. <laughs> good old Captain Crunch. It's just Captain Crunch of peanuts. Captain Crunch chocolate chips, peanuts, uh, maybe like a little pretzels in there. Here's how you make it work: oatmeal, not oatmeal, but yogurt covered raisins. Yeah, exactly. That would be like the milk yogurt covered raisins, Ye- and oh, really good. And then Captain Crunch, uh-huh. and then peanuts, but. Uh, honestly, maybe even a premium, not like a cashew. What about the peanut butter filled pretzels? 
That's a really good idea, Keith. So you have the extra crunch. I'd like to go back. You think <laughs> that <laughs> putting <laughs> Captain Crunch in Chex Mix makes sense? <laughs> a sweet good. Chex Mix. Also, he said. what what a is a sweet Chex Mix? Like a puppy chow. Oh, I like puppy chow. What's puppy chow? You never had puppy chow? Is it, it's Chex Mix a- covered in chocolate <laughs> and powdered sugar. <laughs> it really is. It pretty much is. That sounds cool. It's, it's pretty good. Crazy. It's like got a lot of powder. I was sugar. thinking that when I said Chex Mix. I do realize that typical <laughs> Chex Mix is like mustard flavor. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like mustard. There's bold Chex like Mix. Mustard and rye chips. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of hoops all berries. <laughs> Chex Mix hoops all berries. <laughs> It's never occurred to me that Chex Mix is mustard flavored. I've never be, been able to pin it. <laughs> yeah, it's That's got a little mustard. bit. Well, what, one of the flavorings is mustard. It's a little strategy. revelatory for me yeah. for you to say that. Yeah, how about that? But I think Captain Crunch it. is just good in like an assorted snack mix. I like Captain Crunch. And so I put it in a big mason it jar. It does shred your mouth. It's like cr- tough else. on the mouth for sure. Well, sometimes you got to toughen up. Everybody listening, I want to use your tongue <laughs> and feel the roof of your mouth mm-hmm. and just Feel the years of pizza burns. Oh yeah, is that what that is? Is it is a is the roof of a baby's mouth not ridged like crazy? I don't know. I wonder. You think I my? Feel like you think that's my, all scars? For you me. think it's scar tissue? Uh huh. You think? Yeah, Bring your maybe. mouth over here. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do think that. Yeah. I mean, my mouth is still a little sore from eating. Because like the deeper other day. in the roof of the mouth, it's all flat and nice. Uh huh. But right behind the teeth, war zone. Yeah, you think that's scar tissue? There's certainly an answer to this out there, yeah. but I don't know. I would like you guys to tell us. Let's do some follow up next week. Yeah, right. Instead of talking about how much you love your hometown and yeah. your cool mayor, your, your stupid hog, hometown. Tell us if you under if you understand. <laughs> I mean, if you understand, you what understand what's happening. What happened to my mouth? What's, yeah. the, my mouth? Re- mouth <laughs> what's going on with my mouth? Why is it like yeah, this? That's a good question. Well, that was another perfect podcast. Yeah, pretty good. From the Webby Award-winning podcast. That's damn right. The Tripod. That's damn right. You're not our fans, but we're not friends either. We're somewhere in between. That's right. Maybe we're we're, we're audio acquaintances. Thanks for listening is all. Keith, hit us with the Kirby Suck in a Dick theme song. (gasps) Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, 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 it's the tripod.